HR round up interview and they they wanted to uh, understand why I was um, going to relocate and I have applied in working visa in Europe there are different types of visas so this working visa needs a job offer from a company and okay. only if you have that you can apply for that visa when when the clock ticks ticks 5 then people are like okay today's work is done and we will just leave and no one stares stays at the workplace like difficulty like even the boss even the colleagues they are so welcoming that they, they will also help you with it there is no hierarchical difference um, in india board. like mostly we see field engineers or maybe uh, sales executives or application specialist but you you can see a diversified job roles um, here um, in uh, europe because for when we are looking for a job of course salary is of that major uh, factor we are looking into so what is the average salary range we can expect around uh, 33 percentage of it goes for taxes so that's a major chunk of your salary that is being deducted and that after that you have the main uh, cost of living is food and also housing rent the best thing that you can do is that be expert in your own field you should focus on your own career you should focus on your own field on what you are doing even though it might not f- seem rewarding for you like in terms of finance or but if you know german then you can go to austria you can go to germany you can go to switzerland and there are various other countries which uh, uh, speaks that language or hello everyone welcome to another episode of biomedical vlogs today i have mr esli shaji jor currently he is working as clinical service engineer at diamond diagnostics in hungary welcome esli can you please give a brief introduction about yourself Hi Sathar thank you for having me i am from kerala south part of india and i did my uh, studies that is uh, bachelor's of uh, biomedical engineering in model engineering college kerala and um, after completing my um, degree i i started out as a sales executive in uh, one of the mncs in india which is called transasia uh, biomedicals then i worked there for some time and later on i got an opportunity to work in roche diagnostics um, as a refurbishment engineer so i uh, worked there for like 2 years and after that <clears throat> right now uh, i am in hungary i am working here as a clinical service engineer in diamond diagnostics okay actually in this biomedical vlogs interview series i have done session with many people especially us germany UK, all these countries I have done previously. But most of the people, those who have done higher studies in those particular countries and later they are working there. I know that you directly applied for job in Hungary while working in India itself, right? Yeah, that's so, right. So I, I used to get many queries from biomedical engineers, how I can get a job in a, abroad. Mostly I used to recommend GCC countries that I have seen. It is comparatively easier to get into. So when it comes to European countries or USA, I have seen mostly people do higher studies, then get into a job there. Directly considering someone into those countries, I found it is not that easy as we are expecting. So I yeah, know right. that you were able to get into uh, directly to Hungary, that's a European country, while working in India itself. Can you just share me how was the job application process? How you manage? get into the company so i think many people will be interested to know and they will be even looking for job opportunities in those countries mm-hmm. yeah <clears throat> uh, actually that's a really good question and it is valid uh, for starters uh, let me just say that i was lucky to get this opportunity here in hungary especially in europe uh, because like as you said mostly people do their masters and later on they get into job but in my case um, i i got this i attended the job when i was working for roche in india <laughs> and uh, i think uh, the main uh, reason uh, for um, getting this job is that the field that i'm working in i am working in uh, roche is uh, dealing with uh, clinical devices and ivd industry so <clears throat> i have i got some experience i i was able to be become expert in 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 that particular field so that actually made gave me an extra boost or gave me a benefit so that when a european company i i directly contacted this company via linkedin 
I directly just uh, contacted the HR and asked for vacancies. And he he was uh, he shared that there is a vacancy in Hungary, and they were also looking for an um, engineer. So that's how I got in uh, got this job. <clears throat> it's not that I uh, found uh, in some sites or maybe someone approached me, but I I just randomly searched for refurbishment companies. The the, the same field I'm working in. You were then really I really focused I, into that particular job. Yeah yeah yeah. That's right. That's right. and after that um, uh, there was a vacancy and i got the job over here you know it's it's actually difficult uh, to directly get a job in, from europe because uh, here there is a policy that <clears throat> every uh, if there is a vacancy that country must actually search for uh, people from their own country first okay then only they should uh, 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 recruit someone from outside of their country so it's really difficult to get someone to get to europe and i myself feel very much lucky to get this opportunity so uh, <clears throat> i think the best option or easier method is uh, to do masters like as we <laughs> discussed before okay so i want to know what are the procedure you undergone during this uh, recruitment process mm uh-huh. uh basically um, um initially i just contacted the hr and uh, they just asked me if i was willing to relocate to hungary because for some people it must be difficult and they don't want to leave their position so after getting that confirmation they move uh, moved ahead with this opportunity and they conducted like two rounds of interview initially it was just hr round of interview and they they wanted to uh, understand why i was um, going to relocate and am i able and what is my background and everything it's just a background check after that i had a round of technical interviews where like three or four engineers they uh, uh, asked technical questions and checked whether i uh, am i really worth uh, uh, worth the pay and after that yeah, it, uh, after the interview i virtually got selected to the company okay uh, i got the job offer and after that after that it was uh, a process which involved applying for visas waiting for visa job visa because i have applied in working visa in europe there are different types of visas so this working visa needs a job offer from a company and okay. only if you have that you can apply for that visa and that company and diamond also waited for 2 months for me to recruit to their company so if there is a company which is willing to uh, recruit from outside their country and also willing to wait for 2 months until you get the working uh, work visa then just find that you are very lucky because it, uh, i find that other companies don't do that because they don't want to wait for 2 months and okay. then uh, someone so i want to uh, so make it clear someone. okay so approximately how long it took the entire recruitment process you are telling only 2 months or more than that yeah the interview uh, the basic uh, virtual interviewing everything just got over within a week but the application process and getting the documents ready everything it's like it, it took over 2 months and after that uh, traveling to hungary uh, almost 2 okay. to 2 and a half months yeah i understood so man so long duration yeah so as per my experience i feel 2 months is not that big because even gcc countries also this uh, visa application process everything takes time so i think 2 okay. months is not that long i feel anything less than 3 mm-hmm. months i think it would be okay anyway okay, good okay. to know and <laughs> yeah, when yeah. you moved from india to hungary of course i know the work culture is also entirely different in european countries so mm-hmm. can you please share your experience or your perspective based on your uh, what you have seen the you know uh, <clears throat> the first week itself was um, like a different experience uh, um, at the workplace because um, uh, in my work i work from morning 9 uh, morning 8 till 5 and it's like if uh, when when the clock ticks it ticks 5 then people are like okay today's work is done and we will just leave and no one stares stays at the workplace like after 5 or waits uh, waits some work to do and they will be like they will move it to the next day and then they will just leave for the day so that <clears throat> that's the work culture and you see uh, there is a lot of work like work life balance that i see in companies in europe 
like you can take your holidays even the weekends it, it, it's a it's a holiday here in europe the saturdays and sundays uh, you don't have someone calling you in between during the weekends for that mostly happens in india right yeah yeah <laughs> yes yes and Uh, like uh, and it is much more relaxed compared to what i um, uh, the maybe the work pressure or anything it is much much more relaxed uh, the work i have over here in europe and <clears throat> you know there there is actually discussion right now in europe to make the work days to 4.5 days per week wow. so they are going to give like half day from friday so <laughs> it, it's like um, you have a lot of time to uh, take it for yourself and do anything you want to yeah even one of the post you uh, said what you said even i have observed the discipline they are having not just about leaving on time they are also coming on time starting the meeting on time i think everything yeah, yeah. they are prefer to be on time that's what i have seen uh-huh. mostly that uh-huh. little bit yeah, different yeah. what i have seen you know in other maybe especially in india yeah yeah that's right that's right okay uh, so other than that how uh, you are uh, colleagues how they are supporting during the working hours uh, the support you are receiving from your management so how do you look into that uh, you know uh, <clears throat> after joining this company it, it's more like you are the boss of yourself no one will come after you and ask you to do this job or anything like if they have assigned some job to you then you have to make it done and you have to schedule yourself like it's not that someone will uh, come and tell okay today you need to work on this stuff or uh, next week we have to do something but uh, they will give you one task and you have to prove yourself that you can finish it on time and uh, and if if you are finding some difficulty like even the boss even the colleagues they are so welcoming that they, they will also help you with it there is no hierarchical difference even the boss is also your colleague and <laughs> you can have a fun time with your boss so i think it's kind of different uh, back in india so that is also one positive thing that everyone is supportive of you so um, that is also a good benefit of course that's also a positive thing about the work culture you are talking about when comes to the uh, other opportunities biomedical engineers are having especially you are in hungary right now so which are the opportunities you know the uh, which biomedical engineers can work or apply uh, i um, i i am actually working in the ivd industry so i have more knowledge about that so um, there are mncs like um, roche uh, beckman or maybe abbott or may, many other mncs they have their own offices here in hungary and it, hungary is considered to be uh, uh, one of the hubs for many of the main offices of uh, these mncs so there are many uh, job opportunities in these places like uh, uh, in india like mostly we see field engineers or maybe uh, sales executives or application specialist but you you can see a diversified job roles um, here um, in uh, europe because for each and every Uh, task you have different people to do that so you don't have to uh, uh, do everything from a to z there is someone else to replace you like for example like if you look at like installation of an instrument uh, there is installation engineers and if you look at like field service there are field service engineers in house engineers are different so like you have three people instead of one if if, if you just uh, compare it so um that's there are, there is a, a many opportunities and also in um <clears throat> since you are uh, since uh, if you are located in europe then it's easier to um, know about the vacancies uh, that is there in this mncs so i think a, a europe has a, it's a hub for like biomedical engineers to go and uh, get some job over here okay when we are looking for a job of course salary is of that major a factor we are looking into so what is the average salary range we can expect uh, <clears throat> actually um uh, that is that is a very uh, that is an important question like everyone asks when they join a, a new job and like um, i can give you an give you a scale or a range in hungary but the thing is that we can't normalize that in every part of europe because it's totally different because uh, after coming here i understand that <clears throat> europe itself it's 
it has its own uh, advantages in some places and um, other advantages in other places for example if you take eastern side of europe it's much more um, what is a cheaper uh, living costs and everything so the pay scale is much more less compared to the european countries which are uh, situated on the west side of europe <clears throat> and if you look at the pay scale it's it's up the ladder like eastern european countries you have the base and then western european countries you have little more better pay and even the nordic uh, countries like maybe norway sweden or finland or anything you have much more better pay over there so <clears throat> but the thing is that the lifestyle uh, the cost of living everything differs in many places so the average uh, 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 salary differs but here in hungary let me say that um, i think um, an average scale uh, for a person who has an experience for maybe 3 years or maybe 4 years it can start from maybe 1500 euros to uh, maybe 3000 or 3500 euros it depends on which company you are working on like if it's an mnc then you can be on the higher side of that range but if it's a like medium sized company or maybe uh, other companies then uh, the pay will be differing okay so uh, when we are living in a country our expense or our family everything we have to look after so how the average expense we may have to ex in the country you know uh, you know when when you get your salary around uh, 33% of it goes for taxes so that's a major chunk of your salary that is being deducted and that after that you have the main uh, cost of living is food and also housing rent when you look at the expenses over here for an average uh, for example uh, one bedroom apartment it costs like around 500 euros uh, uh, per month and like uh, <clears throat> then food expenses then it will be like maybe 600 or 700 euros like it depends on how much you eat and It, so uh, the amount that i'm giving it's not a reference but if you have if you just eat outside like once in a while or maybe save up a little bit then this can be uh, the average range and also uh, there are other expenses like transportation and everything <clears throat> europe it's actually one of the uh, most connected uh, places in all over the world because you have buses you have trams you have trains you have all other facilities to uh, go places so public transport is a good option so you have to uh, move aside a little bit of your salary for public transportation too so that is the main exp expenses so uh, if you have a salary of maybe like 3000 or maybe 1500 half of it goes for the rent and like most of it goes for the uh, food and everything so uh, it it is very important that a person when he applies for a job in europe he has to look into the expenses not just the amount of salary by converting it into rupees or something but he needs to look also into the expenses that uh, you have to meet <clears throat> and and one another thing is that there is market fluctuations so the the expense you have right now is totally different from from what you are going to have like after one year so uh, there there is no fixed average or something so you need to be also you need to look into data which is also latest that is there in the internet or else you will get <laughs> you will get a hard time moving to uh, europe and staying over here you won't okay. get any savings and all right so when you are in hungary what do you feel about the experience in india versus hungary so let be the personal or maybe professional uh, <clears throat> you know um, i feel that uh, both countries like both places has its own benefits and its own pros and cons like if you look at europe like you have a better lifestyle you have uh, better job opportunities and maybe better work life balance <clears throat> but uh, for me personally uh, moving to europe or moving to hungary it's like um, what do you say away from family and it's mostly like personally i feel that you are actually you have rules for everything like you have rules for traffic you have rules for everything in india 
you can just go to anywhere and you don't have to take any permission so it has its own uh, pros and cons and coming to hungary like i sometimes i miss my family and it's not that i can take uh, a holiday for one day and go back, go to india and then come back so you have to plan everything maybe in one year or maybe two years you can visit your family so it, it, it's a balance so <clears throat> personally uh, i feel that europe is good for your career and uh, staying for a longer period of time like if you are planning to settle over here but personally i feel that uh, i can work over here in hungary then later on uh, i will move back to india because that's where my heart belongs so um it and it, it has its own special place in my heart so uh, that is the differences that i find over here okay uh, there will be people and, those who are yeah please can't wait. yeah let me just also like uh, add one more point that uh, in india the healthcare facility also was something that i uh, uh, noted a difference between in europe and also in india because uh, <clears throat> in europe you have a national uh, health healthcare facilities where you pay taxes for your own insurance or healthcare and that is taken care of by the government and in india it's more like private facilities and and also government hospitals but you can <clears throat> avail anything when you are in india oh you have to take appointments for each and everything like appointments for doctors appointments for um, other official purpose and even appointments for barbers so that is something fascinating <laughs> that okay. i found over here uh, and fascinating and frustrating too at, at times so uh the healthcare i think it's much more uh, better in india like you have skilled doctors and all over there <clears throat> and over here particularly in hungary uh, this is not a general case but particularly in hungary like there is a difficulty of language like you have to learn the local language that is a must when someone moves to a european country because in germany you have german like in other france you have french in hungary it's a it has its own language so it is very much difficult to live a normal life and like communicate with others when they they don't know english or like the level of uh, communication is much more less in other people so that is also a major difference that you can feel in european countries okay so i am sure many people those who are watching the video will be interested to for jokes in maybe european country So what is the suggestion you are having to them you know uh, my uh, 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 my suggestions uh, primarily will be like if you if there is an option for you to do masters then certainly um, do a masters and then that will help you uh, move forward in your career like when you are having a job like you will get a better pay scale and everything then after doing masters you can uh, get a job easily in europe and that's how many, um, many of them move to europe and the next thing is that <clears throat> if there is no scope for you to do masters then the best thing that you can do is that be expert in your own field you should focus on your own career you should focus on your own field on what you are doing even though it might not f- seem rewarding for you like in terms of finance or in terms of other things it might be hard work but if you focus and become an expert it actually helps you a lot in the long run and in my personal uh, uh, case also i can say that it is only because that i had that experience that value that i was able to uh, have this uh, opportunity to move abroad so if you are uh, working in a field focus on that do not change regularly uh, try to understand the core um, and then it will uh, help you a lot and when you are coming to europe <clears throat> one another thing is that uh, like uh, in hungary they speak only hungarian language and this language is not spoken by other european countries so if you are learning hungary and coming to hungary you you won't have that scope to move to other countries but if you know german then you can go to austria you can go to germany you can go to switzerland and there are various other countries which uh, uh, speaks that language or use that language to communicate so it is better to learn those languages and move to those countries where there is more opportunity rather than just coming to one place and uh, uh, then uh, having a uh, uh, what is a closed opportunities so that is a few suggestions that i have to give 
thank you so much Jessely, for taking your time and sharing all these details thank you very much yeah. once again and see you later bye yeah thank thank you also for having me here